35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And we sing. From Infection City, just across from the other Infection City, it's the Ramble with Alex Bennett. We go until midnight tonight. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good to see you again. Glad you could join us this evening as we come to you from, as I say, the most infected city in the world. Okay, although getting less infected, we had a better report today from our governor. It still isn't great. We still have to stay indoors. We still have to hunker down. We have to fight this damn coronavirus. Uh, otherwise, we'll all be dead, uh, especially me because of my age and pre-existing conditions and all that other crap. Um, uh, you know what I want to do? i got to set this up, though, so that we can do it. Uh, I want to go look at our map, first of all because this is the map that we look at each and every night to see exactly what's happening uh, uh, out there in the world around us with this lovely coronavirus, which now has infected 2,704,676 human beings on the planet and killed 190,549 of them. Uh, here are those totals. You can see, I, I think my arrow, yeah, my arrow shows up there. Okay, good. I'm glad that does. Uh, total tests conducted in the United States, 4,660,250. I'm not one of them. Okay. Why? I don't know. I, they, haven't, they haven't called me. Let's go to the U.S. Uh, uh, let's go to the U.S. map. It's kind of, I'm kind of like I'm doing a weather forecast. Looks a little, um. Uh, Looks a little sparser around in here now. Kind of clearing up. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. And the deaths in New York yesterday were something like 430. It's, it's going down. It's going down. Uh, total deaths in New York City, though, that would include all the, uh, the boroughs. Uh, uh, it's uh, 16,388 uh, 16, deaths, okay? Uh, Spain coming in a, uh, a, a second place uh, with 22,157 deaths in the entire country. Uh, and uh, so uh, here we are. We're back at the U.S. again. Wow, that is starting to, that's starting to clear up because on other nights it was uh, a lot less, you know, a lot. It was more filled up in this area in here. Okay. All right. Uh, but it's not anymore. And... Um, let me see here. France is third. Uh, Germany is fourth. United Kingdom, fifth. Turkey is sixth. Seventh is Iran. Is eighth is China, if China is telling us the truth. Everybody doubts that China is telling us the truth. How many died in China, by the way? 4,636 deaths in China. That's less people than died in New York City. Okay? So anyway, um, that's that. Okay? Uh, we also have this other map, this other piece of information that I got. Let me see if I, yeah, I can get this. This is the New York City COVID uh, thing. And uh, uh, we have, uh, let's see, can, so far uh, hospitalized 36,000. Well, uh, we have 141,754 cases, of which 36,723 were hospitalized. Confirmed deaths, 10,290. Uh, that's... It looks higher than the one. Oh, well, that's a well. It said New York City. I don't know. I don't get which one. Which one is right and which one is wrong? Is it this one, or is it this one? Because when I go up to the U.S. here and we look at New York, um, it says sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-eight deaths. Okay, and what they're saying is it's um, ten thousand confirmed deaths. Oh, well, anyway, a probable deaths, 5,121, okay? Uh, daily counts here, we have uh, our daily counts. This is, uh, as of the 21st, I guess, was 105 uh, in uh, cases in New York City, new cases in New York City. Uh, see how this is kind of going up, but now it's going down, 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 down. 
Okay. Uh, hospitalizations. Uh, look at this going going down again. And uh, and and the reason I'm I'm telling you somewhere like out in Nevada about what's happening here in New York is because it, we're 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 the canary in the coal mine. Okay. And because, quite frankly, this affects me. The deaths, uh, look, look at how high they got. One day we did 500, 546. I think we did more than that on one day. But anyway, uh, all of these have gone down, 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 down. And I, I, but I don't get this because this one doesn't seem to, be, doesn't seem to fit with what the, our mayor said. Let's look at the rates by age. Uh, here I am right here. All right there's me, okay. Uh, cases, my group's the highest. Deaths, my group is the highest. Hospitalizations, my group is the highest. Uh, and rates by sex, uh, I'm a guy. Cases, ma male. Number one in hospitalizations, male, and in deaths, male again. Okay, all right, okay. So that's our uh, looking at the. Uh, Looking at the uh, the ma the map, it's like looking at the weather map. Let's go over to Bob with the weather here, and uh, and then I come up with this uh, this uh, this crap. Okay, so anyway, that's our that's our thing for tonight. Gee, I was over scanning again. Oh well, so what? Who cares? Anyway, um, so listen, it, 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 what happened today? I every morning. When I wake up around eleven, I immediately run and ask um, Marjorie, "When when's the boy coming on?" And we're referring to our our governor Andrew Cuomo every day about eleven thirty gives a uh, uh, a thing. Oh, by the way, you know what I didn't do here? You know what I didn't do tonight. You know, do I look different? You know, this looks pretty good actually, all things considered. But when I do this, oh, oh now I look gorgeous. I forgot to turn on the lights. Ah, boy. That's what happens when I take... I have two pills that I take. I take uh, Xanax and one uh, some nights, and on other nights when I don't take the Xanax, I take a thing for my neuropathy, which is uh, like Lyrica, and it makes me forget stuff, and I forgot to turn on the lights. I thought there was something wrong with the picture, but anyway, now, now you can see how lovely I am. Anyway, uh, I get up and I listen to our governor, because our governor is really really gives a great summation of what's going on and shows you the figures and what they mean and why you have to do this and why we've got to do that and what has to be done. Yeah, he's really good about it. He's really terrific. And uh, uh, so we watch him every day. And occasionally he gets a little mad because somebody did something that really pissed him off. Uh, I, the other day I, uh, I played a thing that he did that took him, how long did it take, 15 minutes, something like that, maybe longer? Uh, about Trump. Well, today, oh my, 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 did he a ever go after, uh, <laughs> did he ever go after, uh, well, you'll see who he went after. Uh, I want you to see this. It runs about five minutes, and it's, uh, it's you'll, you'll be chair, if you're, if you are against this government, as it were, um, uh, you will definitely uh, be, um, really cheering uh, our uh, governor on. Uh, li listen to what he did here. You know, you'll, you'll see what it's all about. It's all self-explanatory. Uh, also, I want to speak to a point from our friends in Washington. Uh, Senator McConnell, who is the head of the Senate. You know, we've been talking about funding for state and local governments. And it was not in the bill that the House is going to pass today. They said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, the next bill. As soon as the Senate passed it, this current bill, Senator Mitch McConnell goes out and he says, uh, maybe the states should declare bankruptcy, okay? This is one of the really dumb ideas of all time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said to my colleagues in Washington, I would have insisted that state and local funding was in this current bill because I don't believe they want to fund state and local governments. And not to fund state and local governments is incredibly short-sighted. They want to fund small business, fund the airlines, I understand that. But 
state and local government funds police and fire and teachers and schools. How do you not fund police and fire and teachers and schools in the midst of this crisis? Yes, airlines are important. Yes, small business is important. So are police and fire and healthcare workers who are the frontline workers. And when you don't fund the state, then the state can't fund those services. Makes no sense to me. Also makes no sense that the entire nation is dependent on what the governors do to reopen. We've established that. It's up to this governor, it's up to this governor, it's up to this governor. But then you're not gonna fund the state government? Would you think I'm gonna do it alone? How do you think this is gonna work? And then to suggest we're concerned about the economy, states should declare bankruptcy? That's how you're gonna bring this national economy back? By states declaring bankruptcy? You wanna see that market th fall through the cellar? Let New York State declare bankruptcy. Let Michigan declare bankruptcy. Let Illinois de declare bankruptcy. Let your, California declare bankruptcy. Uh, you will see a collapse of this national economy. So just dumb. Vicious is saying when Senator McConnell said, uh, this is a blue state bailout. What he's saying is if you look at the states that have coronavirus problems, they tend to be democratic states. New York, California, Michigan, Illinois, they are democratic states. So if you fund states that are suffering from the coronavirus, they're democratic states. Don't help New York State because it is a democratic state. How ugly a thought. I mean, just think of, just think of what he's saying. People died, 15,000 people died in New York, but they were predominantly Democrats. So why should we help them? I mean, for crying out loud, if there was ever a time you're gonna put aside, for you to put aside your pettiness and your partisanship and this political lens that you see the world through, Democrat and Republican, and we help Republicans, but we don't help Democrats. That's not who we are. It's just not who we are as a people. I mean, if there's ever a time for humanity and decency, now is the time. And if there was ever a time to stop your political obsessive political bias and anger, which is what it's morphed into, just a political anger. Now is the time. And you want to politically divide this nation now with all that's going on? How irresponsible and how reckless. I'm the governor of all New Yorkers, Democrat, Republican, Independent. I don't even care what your political party is. I represent you, and we are all there to support each other. This is not the time or the place or the situation to start your divisive politics. It is just not. And that's why, look, our rule has been very simple from day one. This is, there is no red and blue. There should have never been a red and blue when it comes to any important issue, but certainly not now. Uh, and that's not what this country is all about. It's not red and blue, it's red, white, and blue. And when we talk about New York tough, we're all New York tough, Democrats and Republicans. And we're all smart, and we're all disciplined, and we're all unified, and we're all in this together. And we understand that, and that's how we operate. Uh, and we operate with love, and we're strong enough to say love. To say love is not a weakness, it is a strength and New Yorkers are that strong. Wow. Huh? Phew. <laughs> Boy, did he rip one for, rip, uh, for uh, Mitch McConnell. And, and speak, speaks out exactly for something which is very important in this country, that we don't make this a political issue. It's not a political issue. Now, uh, let's see, who do we feel sorry for today? Okay, here's, usually, sometimes I feel sorry for uh, the woman I refer to as Scarfy, 
You know, I can't remember her name now. She wears the scarf and gives the some of the medical stuff at Trump's uh, soirees at 6 o'clock at night. Uh, and uh, then uh, there's Dr. Fauci, who, you know, all he wants to do is give you, give you the facts, and that's what he does. And then Trump is standing over there going, hmm, he's, he's not saying what I said. He's not agreeing with what I said. He's not agreeing with what I do. And he's always trying to get these people to agree with him. I mean, there was this some embarrassing footage the other day where um, he went to Fauci and he said, well, this is so, but, but really that could be so, right? Right? He was trying to, like, lead him into giving him uh, the answers he wanted to hear. Okay? Uh, and, and so I feel sorry for Fauci in those kind of situations. Uh, now, today, the person I'm going to feel sorry for is a guy by the name of Bill Bryan. Never heard of this guy before, and I don't think Trump did until he heard that he had something to say that might somehow agree with something he had said. And his name is Bill Bryan, and he's the Science and Technology Director of the Department of Homeland Security. Now, I don't know what exactly his, um, his, uh, his credentials are, but I'll assume he knows what he's talking about. A while back, Trump said, well, when summer, when summer comes, this is all going to go away, because during warm weather, these things always go away. And the medical experts said, no way, it's not necessarily going to go away. And uh, just like Dr. Fauci is saying, it's sure as hell going to come back, all right? It's going to come back. Uh, and uh, then Trump, of course, goes, yeah, but it might not, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, he got up and he talked about the fact that, uh, that uh, during the warmer months, uh, when the sun is out, the ultraviolet rays can... Uh, destroy the uh, uh, virus within a matter of minutes, okay, uh, that ultraviolet light will kill it. Now, I don't understand that because you have ultraviolet light all the time. Uh, even during the winter, when you have clear skies but the temperature is 38, you still have ultraviolet light. So I don't know why it hasn't been killing it up to this point, but I'll give in to his kind of science. And then a later point in, the, in his, uh, his description of what was going on, which try, you know, Trump brought him in to support his feeling that it was going to get worse in the su- get better in the summer. Uh, he said that, uh, and be sure in your home that you clean all non-porous surfaces. Uh, porous surfaces, uh, the, the virus can't cling to, but por- uh, non-porous surfaces like sinks and so on and so forth, it, it can. So wipe it off with disinfectant, or use bleach. Bleach, he said, will kill the virus in something like uh, uh, 10 seconds or something like that. Some amazing amount of time that bleach will actually kill the virus if it's on a surface. Well, Brainiac then comes into the picture after it's all over. <laughs> and he decides that uh, he, um, he has uh, an idea, and he has the, actually the solution, as President of the United States, how we can solve this whole problem. Now, remember the statement that bleach will kill the virus in a matter of seconds. Disinfectants will do it within a matter of a couple of minutes. Ultraviolet light can kill the virus, okay? That was his determination. This is your president, who some of you voted for. So I ask Bill a question that probably some of you are thinking of if you're totally into that world, which I find to be very interesting. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said, that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who right. And then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning, because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with, but it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. Ah, it sounds interesting to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. 
What a moron! Number one, number one. You cannot put ultraviolet light inside of people. And even if you did, it would not kill this virus once it's doing its damage biologically. Okay? Any decent human being knows that. Any smart human being knows that. But we're not talking about a president who's working with a a fully functional brain. And then the suggestion that we inject into people disinfectants and bleach, that was it, you know. Oh, Mr. President, thank you for saving our lives. Uh, Gee, we injected bleach into this guy, and guess what? He died. Uh, Wait a minute, we we put some disinfectant into this guy, and he died. I mean, where where did... Why does this guy even say this kind of stuff? And I'm sure everybody, I don't know how the people working with him can stand this behavior. I mean, it's just unfathomable what happens with this guy. So that was that was our uh, our president, De La United States of America. Uh, We all elected him for president. Well, I didn't vote for him, but we elected him as a body of people. And it's kind of it's kind of sad. Uh, uh, so far, again, as the ultraviolet light is concerned during the summer, ultraviolet light exists all year long. And one of the reporters brought it up, said, hey, you know, I mean, it's always hot in, uh, in Singapore, and uh, they seem to have uh, continued to have a problem. Uh, and, uh, you know, the sun is out shining hot and bright, and, you know, that doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to be working there. Uh, so what makes you think that it all of a sudden and they couldn't answer that question, you know? But there are places in the world where it's very warm, and uh, whatever. I don't know. I give up. I give up. Anyway, our lines are open. If you want to call and talk to us uh, tonight, um, I have something here that Vernon Nunn sent me, and I hope Vernon calls because he and and Phil were having a uh, what I call a p- pissing match back and forth. And uh, she seeing me on it, and uh, it's it's kind of an interesting thing that Vernon was trying to. Oops, who say? Let me. Oh, let me turn that down. That scares me. Uh, oh, it's Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen. As I live and as I collectively as breathe, I uh, here he is. There we go. Brian Neary starts off the night. Hello, Brian. How are you? Uh, my hour will be sponsored by bleach. Yeah, yeah. A little in here, and it even says it kills bacteria and viruses right on yeah. there. Okay, so I guess we should inject that, as the president suggested. You know, there's some dope now who's going to listen to what he said and is going <laughs> to swallow some bleach. Okay? You know that. You know that. You know, the man has no uh, no sense of responsibility toward, you know, when I did, a, when I did radio shows uh, to a large audience, uh, not the size audience that I am now playing to, which is not quite as large. Um, let me see here. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Have we got him? Oh, yeah. There we got him. Okay. Let me see. I got to put, um, um, uh, let me see here. We'll put... Uh, We'll uh, go to source two, and we'll make it uh, Mr. Zeller. There he is. Okay. All right. There he goes, and he should pop right in. There we go. Hello, Jeff. Um, But um, uh, when I was doing a radio show, I always didn't want to give wrong information because when you give wrong information, some people may take it seriously uh, if you're wrong about it, and so you can't give information which might be (laughs) interpreted uh, as uh, we have some audio coming back at us anyway uh you can't you can't uh, uh, do that uh as a uh hello charlie um what what's all that noise uh, sorry close the sorry. window oh okay all right anyway uh so anyways i was saying um uh, uh you've got to be careful about what you say you can't do anything which will endanger somebody because there are people listening in the audience who might not understand what they, what you're saying is either a joke or it's just hypothesis or whatever. And the president does this all the time. He puts people in danger by giving them false theories. I mean, he talks about fake news. Uh, what what happens to this? Uh, what, isn't this isn't this like fake information he's giving out? I mean, how irresponsible of him to do this. 
I, I don't understand it. Uh, just, uh, it, you know, and I'm sure his people tell him not to do this, and he still goes ahead and he uh, does it. Anyway, let me, uh, let me uh, uh, go to my next frame there because we have Phil in there. Yes, Charlie? Um, Trump is right that UV rays can kill viruses, bleach can kill viruses. The problem is they kill people, too. The level, intensity that it would take to kill the virus would kill a human being. Mm -hmm. So I can't use it on, a human, on this virus when it's inside a human being. Just like you can't use bleach. Bleach yeah. will kill a human being if you inject it. That's right. You're right. Yeah, but tanning, tanning beds, tanning beds have UV lights. UV lights. That's right. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah, but tanning, tanning beds, tanning beds have UV lights. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Somebody's got their radio on. Uh, they, they got uh, John. You, you've got your audio on. Turn it off, will you, please? Yeah. Okay. Now I think we can hear you. Yeah, I was YouTube. I was watching you on YouTube. You can't do YouTube and Skype at the same time. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Were you saying something, John? About that? Yeah, you can't do, you can't do Skype and YouTube oh, at the oh, same time. Oh, okay, yes. Back to Phil. Yes, Phil. Uh, I saw an article uh, recently that the air, airplanes were going to use uh, or are using UV light to disinfect the plane, the seats, the armrests, the uh, you know the the surface areas of, of the uh, of the planes. And I guess this technology is out there because there's also CPAP cleaner machines that use UV light mm -hmm. and there's also I have a tooth I have a toothbrush yeah that, I have a toothbrush that has a UV head yeah you stick it yeah. in a thing you mm -hmm. push the button and it gives you some blue light that's yeah. and it works so well that's uh, that's the stupidity our president works with because if if I'm not mistaken tell me if I'm wrong Brian but this is a different kind of bacteria, a different kind of thing, and it does not necessarily react to ultraviolet light. And at the very least, if you have a plane and up above they're shining down ultraviolet light, if you put your hand under the seat, you can have the virus there, and it will not have been affected by the ultraviolet light. These people on the plane, they're the normal people that clean the surfaces, and they're using UV to clean surfaces, you know, uh, they're not shining it yeah, down. Yeah, but that's before anybody gets in the plane, Phil. Right, no, you can't do that. that. You so, that Phil, Phil, Phil people, you'll you know, I, I, this stupidity is killing us all, Phil. You yeah. can't use that UV on people. They're not using it on people. They clean right, it. that's why it works. It's because they're using it on inanimate objects like seats. Yeah, that's, that's where you'd use UV. Right, you don't use it on people. Uh, did Trump actually say he used it on yeah, people? Did you hear? I played the, uh, uh, I can play it again. I can play, so, wait a minute, hold on a second. Yeah, I, I can play it again. Listen closely, and everybody be quiet because it's going to come in on the same channel that you guys are on. But this is this is what he said after uh, the, those statements were made. And you, if you tell me this isn't the stupidest remark you've ever heard, uh, I, I just will lose my lunch. <laughs> A question that probably some of you are thinking of if you're totally into that world, which I find to be very interesting. So, supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that has him in check, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. Right, and then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs, and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. There you go. Phil? 
Did you I heard the word suppose. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 uh, this, is, this is outside the box thinking, and he's asking questions. Oh, uh, yeah, Phil, you know, Phil, 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 these, Phil, would, would you even suggest, oh, would you even suggest that, that we, we put Clorox in the veins of a person with coronavirus? Some people. But, you know. Uh, no, well, no, wait a minute, but he, that's exactly what he was saying, Phil. Well, he said, "Hey, what about this stuff? Can you can you look into this? Is there a way you could do this?" The man is thinking outside the box. Oh, I'm glad he's thinking outside the box. He's trying to stifle creativity. That's what you're trying to do. Creativity? Are you kidding me? That's not creativity. The answer could be no, that doesn't work. No, that's not a good idea. The answer could be, "Listen, you stupid dolt. You know, listen to you, you stupid piece of shit." What's that? You know, you're 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 killing people with this kind of information, and I just I don't know how these people even put up with staying with this guy. These because doctors you, must be going crazy. It's selective listening, and your friend Vernon. No, it's not selective. No, it is not selective listening, Phil. Yeah, I I heard the whole thing. I heard him say, "Well, what about?" You know, can you look into this? Is there any way? Yeah, you like they've got you, better you, things you, to do than think about putting, oh, yeah. uh, somehow shoving ultraviolet light into human beings. I'm just going to hit it. Okay, I'm let, gonna, let, let other people talk, I'm Phil. I'm going to do what I'm Trump gonna, does. I'm going to cut you off and go to other people now. <laughs> you know. you to put a light socket up your ass and turn it on. He said, what about? You know? I'm, I'm going to open up a UV car wash. You'll be my first customer, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you a month's worth of car washes for eighty bucks each. You can come down and do it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's trying to sell tanning beds. Brian, you're taking what the president said. Oh, unbelievable! Yeah, I, I, when, when he started talking about the UV part, and then he went, it, he, "You say no, you're not going to say this about the disinfectant." And then he starts talking about the disinfectant. Right when they switch over from CNN, that's the first thing they started saying is like, is he, is he, you know, trying to have people try this? I mean, how, how would you try it? You well, know, you see, by, that, maybe he wasn't trying to have anybody try it, but he didn't think that he has a lot of stupid people who voted for him, okay? <laughs> and that these people are stupid enough to say, though the president says bleach will work, I think I'll down a bottle of bleach and see what happens. If that's what the people heard that didn't vote for him, they are the stupid ones. Because that's not what I heard. Well, I know, but you're stupid because you heard something you didn't hear. That's it's like it's said. like the stuff you what, sent me last what, night with Pelosi when none of Phil, it, it... Phil, oh, Phil, Phil, you're not that. that stupid. We know yeah. that. Yeah, Alex, come on. Come on, I, Phil. I, you, we, 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 we know this work. is just this has got to just be an act. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, and we, <laughs> you know, we know better than that. Well, yeah. I saw, and I sent them a thing, and it not only incriminated Pelosi. No, it didn't. It, the Blasio. It, it didn't. And no, it didn't. Women. No, it didn't. It was well, all Blasio's these people, all these people who were saying what they knew at the yeah. moment. Okay. Yep. And and and, and like, Pelosi, all Pelosi was doing was trying to keep the Ch Chinese people from panicking because they thought this was going to be taken out on them. And she said, "We're going to be diligent, and we're going to make sure that we're going to do everything we can to make sure this doesn't become a problem here." She's guilty as no, charged. No, no, no. You didn't. You didn't listen to it, Phil. You, you know, you listen with a different head. That ah, boy. I, I sent it to a few other people. I don't know if they listened to it or not. Yeah. Well, I'm. Phil. Phil, e even if the president said we should look into that, in somehow injecting bleach or something, isn't that sort of weird? No. Not, uh, you know, I mean, the guy's trying to think outside the box. I, I, you know, he doesn't have a filter. He, he, sends, he says what's on his mind, and that's what I like about him. You know? I, why, you know hey, let's think out of the box. Why don't we use voodoo dolls? I, 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 I give him credit for that. I give him credit for that, but no yeah. one else can turn around and say you're out of your fucking mind because no one will. Yeah. He has someone has to be able to turn around and say, "No, I don't think that's such a good idea, Mr. President," because if they do, he'll they won't be there him. tomorrow. That's what he's asking. He says, "No, so no, no." He would. No, you know what would happen? He didn't. Look what say, he does to the press. He, he didn't can't even get a question answered. I mean, uh, 
he can't even get a question at him because he berates them people. I know that they they berate him. I agree. Yeah, sure do. But really you know, you gotta you gotta. He he won't. You won't be there tomorrow, if you ask yeah, him. Just, maybe you should think about what you just said. Well, I like that uh, Clorox idea. You know? Even if they had, even if that. <laughs> well, yeah, that guy that, that then, Phil? <laughs> Inject some of that in your veins. No, no, no. I was going to save it for you, Charlie. Patrick, uh, pa Patrick, like Patrick, tornado. Patrick Blazik has just joined us. Patrick, did you hear any of that uh, that I just played uh, the president's? Uh... No, I oh. just got out of shower. Oh, okay. You're lucky because you would have you would have really lost your cookies over what he said. His suggestion I... that maybe bleach would work if we to put bleach injected bleach into people. He said, well, look into it. Bleach kills germs. Yeah. 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 Do you inject bleach in Do you think anybody with any medical decency would even think about looking into that stupid theory that you could stick UV light inside people and kill the virus? How do you know you can't? They Pat do it on Star Trek. Pa Patrick, hi. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that everyone's favorite doctor Mangala probably did probably different shit like that <laughs> with bleach and weird shit. So I'm guessing it's already been tried to see if human can survive it. And considering the number of people that made it out of Mangala grips, I'm thinking no. <laughs> <laughs> Not to make light of the subject, but when you brought up bleach, I seem to remember reading about him injecting various chemicals, and bleach may have been one of them, and it certainly killed whatever virus was in them along with the rest yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. so I, and it was effective. Well, was all right. well I, you know, I guess, I, I guess Trump's doctor has got to be Dr. Mengele. I mean, he'd be his <laughs> primary physician. You know. That seemed bizarre to me. I, I mean, I didn't hear it. But if he said bleach, mm -hmm. that, that's probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard him say. Mm -hmm. Well, he was saying, so he, he said, he's, uh, he was <laughs> referring, he didn't say, he didn't say bleach. He was referring to the p stuff that the doctor mentioned that worked as, as, as getting rid of the virus, such as, and he did mention uh, uh, disinfectants, you know. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> I, Lysol. I mean, I, I spray my gloves down with Lysol when I come in the house, but yeah. I don't spray it in my eyes or anything. So. Yeah, well, I have some disinfectant uh, Mr. Clean that we use here uh, all over the house right now. And uh, after the show, I am, Marjorie has some uh, needles that she uses for her allergies. And I'm going to just uh, fill it up with some of that uh, Mr. Clean and inject it and see what happens. Give it a try. Look like what Mr. are you gonna lose? Yeah, what are you gonna lose? The Couldn't hurt. You got to lose. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna die anyway. So you know. Yeah. Go, you, well, what, you, wait, you, if that guy had that report, wouldn't wouldn't if Trump have heard that report before the press conference? You know, you think he would have presented that to him, and then he would have maybe brought up those ideas into him with him in private, but not like. Uh, next I, think, I, think I think I think everybody's afraid to tell him that he's full of shit. Okay, yeah. they're afraid. Yeah. You know. Uh, they're afraid to confront him and say you're wrong on this, because he can't be wrong on anything, which of course makes him a sociopath. He's not a sociopath. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on. Hold, 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 hold. He gave me two thousand definitions of a sociopath and says this is Trump. I said this is everybody on Gabnet. No, it's not. No, it's not. Then, uh, then the people here on Gabnet are going to hate you. I have the list here. It's only fifteen. No, <laughs> it's only fifteen. Okay. Yeah. One. Uh, yeah, obviously, let's see here. This is the oh, the these are the signs of so of a sociopath. Has glibness and superficial charm. Well, I don't think he has any kind of charm, so he may not be. Is manipulative and conning. Feels entitled to certain things. Sound like anybody you know, Phil? Uh, is yeah. a pathological liar. I don't think he lies. Uh, really? Does not see others around him as people, only as targets or opportunities. Mm. Has shallow emotions. 
Uh, has new uh, has a um, new for what is it? The, has a new for stimulation political rallies. Oh, uh, well, he has to have polit like the political rallies. Exhibits callousness or lack of empathy. Um, nine believes that he is all powerful, all knowing, and entitled to every wish. Number ten does not accept blame himself, but blames others or even acts. He uh, even acts he obviously committed. He's authoritarian, he is secretive, he is paranoid, and does not perceive that anything is wrong with them, uh, and exhibits extreme narcissism. Anybody you know? Yeah, uh, most people that are walking on this earth. Oh, really? I, does anybody feel they fit any of these descriptions? I'm sure oh. they do. There's got to be a couple that fit everybody that, that puts pants on in the morning. No, but he fits all 15. No, he doesn't. The media is repeating this uh, bullshit. No, no, no. Stop with that. Stop with it, Phil. I'm tired of that. The media this, the media that. The media has only one job, and that's to report the news. Okay, no, and, don't and, do and if the news doesn't fit his definition of what he thinks the news is, then they're fake news. If the news doesn't fit, you'll make it up to fit. That's that's how that's how it I'm works. I'm not making it up to fit. I just played you one of the stupidest it, remarks a president could possibly but, make in a press conference, and you're there trying to defend it. You analyzed it out of context. No, I didn't. Anybody yes. think I analyzed it out of context? I just played the damn thing. The man speaks off of his hip, comes up with an idea, doesn't have a filter. He's not secretive. Phil, because he, do you want somebody he, that stupid? Hey, he's fine with me. And he's the okay, president. Okay, time out, Phil. Time out. Anybody else want to say something? Yes, uh, yeah. Charlie. Uh, Kim Jong-un uh, is uh, not feeling very well after his surgery, and Donald Trump expressed condolences for Kim Jong-un. And he's not expressed any condolences for not one of the fifty thousand Americans who have already died. That's he, not, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't even. Word. He didn't even give his that's condolences t today to uh, the brother of uh, Elizabeth Warren yeah, who died, died of COVID. Yeah. He has uh, said many times. He didn't that say happened. anything about him, no. and I think that because she is a major political personality, it would have behooved him to do it. It probably would have, but a lot of things get overlooked. And uh, yeah, Elizabeth like like the, like COVID when it was coming into this country. Yeah, and just like Pelosi did. Oh, and, Phil, uh, the Phil, Pazio. quit monopolizing the conversation. Let some of these other people say something. Charlie, do you have your hand up again? I believe when I open my I, mouth. I, I think Jeff had his his hand up. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. My yeah, Jeff. understanding is every day, whatever Trump has to say, it's not true, and it's just going to give you a headache. And that's why I don't listen to him anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I don't blame you. Yeah, who has his hand up? Let me see here. I do. I oh, do. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. John Larkin. Okay, John. Yeah, I, I just want to say I I saw this statistic. Um, South Korea had had their first uh, positive test of coronavirus, as as we did. They have 180 deaths. To the to the to the, to this date, and we have over fifty thousand. So, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Somebody some, had the biggest jump today. Somebody's California giving us a record. somebody's giving us a phone call here. Let me see here. I'm going to stop. I'm going to take out, not renew this phone. By the way, uh, yes. Who is this? Hello. Who is this? You see, well, a waste. Of, what a waste of my time. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Well, uh, are you there? No, they're not there. Okay. So why am I wasting my time? Uh, anyway, where were we? What? what? If he got through it, but in full house. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't be a full house. Yeah. There's nine of us now. No, there is not nine. Is there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, four is nine. Well, I, then who don't, don't I have? Who don't I have up here? I don't know. I I, I have uh, I have eight. Yeah, but look at the Skype. Yeah, and then I have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you're missing somebody. Plus Alex. Yeah. What do you mean? I've got I'm on, on Skype. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then me. Correct. Well, you got yeah. John Larkin. Uh, yes, got I got everybody. I got Alex. eight people. I got eight people. Eight is five. Phil, well, I got eight did people. You, did eight you inject you. some uh, bleach or what? You got eight plus one is is you. Is yes. Nine. Okay, nine. Yeah. 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 Eight. Plus I'm not one. missing anybody right now. Take another shot of bleach. Yeah, okay. Anybody got some? You, you got some, don't you, Brian? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Do a couple more squirts. Couple is, squirts. Is, is that what they use at the company? No, this is what they say. They say kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses right there. If one of the people who work for you came to you and said, I've got an idea. Maybe we could solve this coronavirus by using bleach injected into people. What would you say to him? Like, before you told him where the door was. Make sure he got scanned at the front door. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Ca California had the most deaths. They hit a peak today. They did. I don't know what the number. I don't know what the number was, but they had the most most deaths they've had so far. Really? Yeah. Any yeah. particular but area of the of California? I didn't see. Yeah. They also talked about a nursing home in San Francisco that had uh, four deaths, mm -hmm. and they said they had like sixty five tested positive for coronavirus at that facility, that, that uh, nursing home. Wow. Really? So yeah, a hundred at a homeless shelter. Wow. But I, you hear me going, oh, no. that sound you hear is me hanging up on this person who keeps trying to call. Uh, uh, don't call. Oh, there they are again. Wait a minute, let me see who they are. Let me see if we can <laughs> even get them on. Who's calling? See? Nobody. What a waste of my time. Could be a robocall. No, it's not a robocall. I don't think so. Uh, do you look. have solar panels? Yeah, yeah. Um but anyway, you know, I mean I just I just I don't know. I and I played I played uh, I don't know how many of you heard Cuomo tonight about about uh uh, uh, Moscow Mitch uh, and what he had to say. And he started a whole... Just as bizarre. Huh? Just as bizarre. Well, he, he intimated even more so that he said, number one, he said that the state should have to file for bankruptcy. He said, and then, not again, I'm going to... You know what I'm going to do? I bet I, I bet I can block this person. Let me see here for what a moment. What if it's uh, Jack? Uh, it, no, if, if it's J uh, J Jack, no, it's it's not. A... Sometimes he used to call on the phone. Yeah, well, you know, I I I, I got see the number. Hmm. You you can't see the number. It's a six five zero area code. That's uh, that's Santa Clara. That's near Bryant's area. Yeah, uh, uh, Peninsula. Yeah. Peninsula. Yeah, Peninsula. Peninsula. Yeah, you're four zero eight. Yeah, he's uh, he's right? Peninsula. Yeah. So anyway, where was I? Um, you know, see, people keep interrupting me here, ruining my line, my thinking, especially on a day when I took that pill last night that makes me forget everything the next day. You, you need to inject some of that Clorox. Yeah, in yeah. It. yeah. Uh, it is. It, it just it just bothers me greatly as to how stupid this guy is. I mean, how absolutely uninformed and unintelligent he is. And rather than attempt to learn something, he can't be like, well, he can't be like Cuomo, who somehow seems to have nothing but empathy running through his body. And even if it's, he doesn't have it, he fakes it really well. And, you know, uh, it, it, the old saying goes, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it, you know. And, and Trump is even incapable of faking it. Uh, he's incapable of reading printed matter on a page. And in fact, I don't think he even reads those, those, uh, those speeches before he reads them. Because he's like some kid at a bar mitzvah who has to read the, the Torah, and he doesn't want to, you know? But he's got to. Otherwise, he's not going to get bar mitzvahed. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Well, then all that's then what you do, what, what you, it would say, but what, I said it pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I just I can't stand it anymore. I, it's getting to the point where I, they, we call it the comedy hour. 
is what we call it. You know. Yes. If, uh, if uh, how do you feel about this, Tony? You know, it's almost like when you watch him now, there's really no re- reason for Trump to go up there every night. It's just so stupid, really. I mean, when he said about, you know, like you said, like he even alluded to it, like, I could have heard it wrong. Was he saying if you go into a suntan that uh, no, it may kill it? Was he? It's almost like he's, no, but or is he saying the heat, maybe? He's misinterpreting it. If we all had an orange skin like him, we'd be immune. Yeah. I mean, even Phil, you have to admit, it. does he really need to be up there every night? He's he the to be president of the United States, whether you like it or not, and that's his job. But it, I, it wasn't his job until his he job saw it was working for uh, Cuomo. Uh, he didn't think to go up every night yeah. until he saw Cuomo doing it. <laughs> and then on top of it, on top That's of it, uh, exactly. he does it because he's missing his rallies. Yes, Brian. Yeah. Exactly. His job right now is to report on coronavirus. And he's not doing that. He talks five or ten minutes and then he talks his, it's like you're saying, his, his you know, polls again. Yeah. So I was talking. Yeah. It's what's important to him. But... Here's a question I pose to you, though. Is he, I mean, this may sound totally off the wall, but is he trying to bring himself out every night and trying to basically job the country into believing, like, if we come out there every night and sell the story and I march that, that like you said, Alex, I can't stand that woman, Bricks. I think she's a moron. I mean, Scarfy? You know, and she, she comes out with the scoff. She plays the whole part like, you know, the you know, the fucking moron I call her really. And I think they're trying to sell a bogus bullshit. They know they mishandled it, but if we march ourselves out in front of the T V sit every night, we might be able to win this election still, even with fifty thousand people dead. We can pull this across. I mean, that we woman is so smart. That woman is so smart. She's got more in in uh, in that uh, intelligence in a scarf than you'll ever have uh, in, in your entire life. You know, you may know about comics, and you may be a nice guy, but you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't denigrate people that are trying to help you like no, that. No, what we denigrate are people who I are who are complicit she's in. I think in, she's selling herself. What we're denigrating is somebody who is complicit in facilitating uh, somebody's. Ugly habit that's killing America. Uh, it, yeah. It, you know, it's like these people are afraid to say no to Trump. I when they get up there, when they, when, they, when they get up there, you know, Pence gets up there, he's always going, and Mr. President, blah, 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 yeah. and Mr. President, and wonderful that? job you're doing, Mr. President. And then the next person gets up and says, thank you very much, Mr. President, and then tells him whatever he wants to hear. And the only one who doesn't do it is Fauci, and he's not too happy about Fauci being up there because uh-huh. the other night when Fauci was up there, I looked at <clears throat> Trump, and he's standing there like this. You know, with, uh-huh. He goes like this. This is how he goes, you know. <laughs> Uh, and he had he had a look on his face because Fauci was saying no, this thing may have is definitely going to have a second wave in the winter and get used to that idea. And Trump is trying to say no. Well, and then the football draft tonight. And then he says to Fauci, he says, "Well, it might not come right." And Fauci went, "No, it's coming. It's coming." Well, he can ask questions. Listen, when I was when I was when I was playing Trump, when I was playing the Trump track a couple minutes ago. So, uh, uh, so the audience could see it again, and so you could hear it. As you were watching it, you were laughing. Why were Who? you laughing, Phil? Yeah. Oh, uh, which Trump? Uh, Come on. I, 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 you were talking about Trump and— No, and the so- audio I played, and then you listened to it, and I was watching to see your reaction, and you were laughing. I don't think so. Yes, you were. I'll look at it again later. Yeah, uh, I don't remember you laughing. Can't, you can't look at it again later because you can't see you in that because I'm running Trump at the time. But I'm oh. glad we gave you a good laugh. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I was laughing at Trump. I was laughing at what, uh, how you misinterpreted what he was saying. Oh, really? I believe did, that. Did, did, everybody who's here, uh, anybody think I misinterpreted what he said? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, your kangaroo court is never going to... It's like... Phil, yes. shut up for a second. I'm asking them. It's no different... I'm asking tr- them. Right. We know what you think, Phil. Yeah. Anybody think that I was coloring it in any, in any, in any way? I mean, I, I heard what I heard, and you heard what you heard, and the only person who heard something different was Phil. It's no different when Trump says, it's this way, right? 
and then Alex says to you guys, it's this way, right? <laughs> hey, you know? yeah, but I, I don't mind if anybody here tells me I'm full of shit, Phil. Except me. <laughs> huh? I tell you you're full of shit. And, well, I know. I don't take offense at that. You know? I know you don't take offense. Yeah. You know? If somebody told Trump if you drink Pop Rocks and Coca-Cola to kill the virus, he'd probably believe it. Does. Try it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do they <laughs> use? They don't say, right? Yeah, whatever you say. I mean, he... You know what it is? It's like he's... He can't even lie with a straight face anymore. And he's trying to do it, though. He's not honest. Well, he's it's trying, he's trying really. to always deny something that he is on the record as having said. Yeah. You know, there was, you could play the track for him, and then he said, well, that's fake news that they have that track. So what do you mean? Words. I mean, you said it. You you tweeted it. You know? Uh, I mean, there's Alex, no questioning when you said that. Question. Can I expel this, Alex? Remember when he tweeted last week to rise up the Second Amendment? What would you take that as? Yeah. Well, Second Amendment supporter. So uh, I don't take it as anything other than supporting your rights. She's calling me, my mother. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't the that wasn't the only that wasn't the only tweet, Phil. Well, he asked about yeah. that. No, he I, he mentioned that one as one of them. Uh, okay, fine. Well, what'd you think I, of the rest of them? That's how he stirred them up. I'm not obsessed with what he says and doesn't say. You know, I don't spend my day looking at his tweets. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, who is this? Sure. You know, I, I get up in the morning, I go to work. You know, that, that's that's my job. I have no idea who this is. Who, who is calling? Hi, Alex. Yeah, who is it? This, this is Seraphin Castillo from the Bay Area. Yeah, Seraphin. Uh, can you turn your camera on? Uh, no, I'm in, in a place where the lighting is terrible, so uh, let me just go with this. I've had a tough time getting a hold of you uh, mm -hmm. this evening. Um, I'm sorry for the phone calls that I made that, that were always to your time, yeah. but it seems I got fast busies on every single one and never heard your voice. Oh, okay. All right. But anyway, uh, well, why don't you quickly say what you have to say, uh, because you don't, you're not on, you know, you don't have the, uh, uh, you don't have a camera, and it's kind of not fun not seeing you. So why don't you say what you have to say? Oh, you got it, Alex. Um, I've been well, a loyal listener for many years, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think this is a good platform to call in and talk about because your guys care, and there's some Bay Area guys there, including Phil, who uh, mm -hmm. probably heard the news today that the first um, COVID-19 death was uh, in the Bay Area, and it was back in February. And it turned out it was my childhood and lifelong friend, friend Patricia. Um, yeah, really? And I was totally shocked today when my wife called me after hearing it on, I think, CNN or something like that, um, letting me know that it was her uh, who we knew had passed away already from a heart attack initially is what they told us. But uh, it was even harder for a great person like her to be in such an infamous headline today. Yeah, but Did uh, she it, have any underlying conditions? Uh, no, she, she was... You know, she was in great shape all of her life, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I just saw her about five years ago. So we all went to a fundraising dinner and uh, she was as good as gold. So was we're she? all very much. How old back. was she? 57. Oh. Well, uh, according to the article, she was 57. And I knew that because we were the same age, but she was ahead, a year ahead of me school wise. Now, why did she? Why, why, now, tell me what the significance of her death was, besides the fact that you knew her and she was somebody you cared about. The significance was she was what one of the first ones to be identified. The first. Well, yes. currently, unless uh, unless yeah. they find something different, she was actually the first She's death. In the February second. Yeah. Do you know if she traveled? Let me, Phil, let me ask oh. the questions here. Uh, 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 no, I appreciate I appreciate Phil's questions. Actually, I've been actually uh, I got called by the SF the San Francisco Chronicle and KTVU Channel Two. Oh, you know, uh, and basically uh, right now the uh, the dad of the family is really ticked off because I guess the press has really come at him really bad, and he's requested family and friends not to, uh, uh, you know, contract the, the press about it and anything like that. But again, your forum is one that I've been with all my life, so uh, I just thought I'd, yeah. I'd uh, you know, uh, but sing, sing let her me praise. ask you this. So I'm not getting it complete. You're saying she was what, what her significance was? She was the first person to get the coronavirus. First person to die. To, to die. die in where? In the Santa U.S. County. In, in the U.S., in the, but, yeah. but when, when did she die? February 6th. Oh, I see. Okay, I thought, and you just found out about it. Yeah, we just found well, no. out. They just revealed that oh, she died. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Yeah, All right. initially, 
initially, uh, you know, she was, she was uh, supposedly had died of a heart attack. Her daughter found her. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and here, you know, I'm born in uh, and now, whenever anybody dies, they go to the same funeral parlor, which is the Cusamanos, that, that you know, pretty much are, are pretty big in this area. So they have an uh, obituary page. Right? They just uh, told me what happened. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, hold, 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 on, hold on a second. You're having some trouble with your phone. Uh, hold it just in one place, okay, so that it doesn't move because you're fading in and out. You got it. Okay, there you go. Anyway. Yeah, no, you got it. Go ahead. Anyway, but anyway it, it, and and so they thought was, they didn't know that. Well, at the time passed away at the beginning of the year. Yeah, uh, on February sixth, uh, everybody thought it was a heart attack. Her daughter found her dead. How did they finally decide and that not, it was coronavirus? That was it. I mean, this is coronavirus uh, after um, the fact. She right? didn't travel a lot, and but she didn't you're breaking up on us. Really well down here in the bay. <clears throat> You, you they were, did an autopsy on her, and they found out in the autopsy. Yep. yep. I see. Okay. Did she have any signs of the virus before she died? No. You wouldn't know because we, we weren't looking for it. Right? Yeah. Well, I talked to her brothers and sisters today, uh, and uh, according to her, little, her youngest brother, there were no signs. She was doing just fine. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And then one day they just found her dead of a heart attack. Yeah, her daughter came home from school and, you know, found her dead. Uh, and the uh, autopsy, they didn't do an autopsy, but they basically figured from everything they saw mm-hmm. when they when they uh, came to her, it's a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Kevin? So there was actually two of them, and the, the other one was like a week or two later. And what they found, yeah. it was from a post-portum uh, autopsy, and they say that they could find more. This is just the first two that they found yeah. before uh, the first official death. So they could find more, and this is what they mean by finding asymptomatic uh, mm-hmm. possibilities that there was that it was around beforehand, and that's why they were saying even with the um, the possibility that it could have been spread community with the uh, 49ers losing the uh, Super Bowl, it could have been being spread had they won the Super Bowl at the parade. They were saying that it's a godsend that the 49ers didn't win the Super Bowl because it could have been spread wow. during the parade. So, you know, yeah, that would have been a good reason because if she passed at that time, that was right around the time there would have been a parade. And if it was yeah. asymptomatic people around, it could have been ugly. Yeah, I'm just wa- I'm just wondering how this did how this to begin with did, it came out at this time. I mean, you would think they she had died. They had uh, had a funeral. They buried her. And how did they all of a sudden find out that this was from Corona? Because at that point, I don't think we were really looking for it. Okay. I think autopsy, they must have done a post, post-mortem ob- autopsy. Oh. But, but yeah, how, one how, of the things that I heard well, is that... You, go, go ahead, Kevin. No, it's I mean, uh, Brian. The, the guy, Brian. the caller's trying to co- talk. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, uh, Alex, this is Seraphin again. Uh, it was based on contact tracing. Apparently, um, you know, there were other people who were involved in, in getting the coronavirus around that time. And when, mm-hmm. when they, uh, uh, you know, the coronavirus came into suspicion there because of a heart attack, uh, there was some contact tracing done. And that's uh, been what's brought those two cases here in the Bay Area to death, to, to the light, that is, before the Washington death. So that's that's the latest news. Is pretty much it was based on wow. contact tracing. Even the family told me that, that uh, there was there was some suspicion. I, be- I believe she went after she uh, died. She was taken to El Camino Hospital in Mountain View, and uh, that's may- maybe where most of the work was done with the county. Wow! Wow! Well, that's how they figured it was and, and, the, and these people, out. these these first people they found, I, from what I saw, uh, had no contact with any other country. They had not been abroad. Well, well. Um, as I was trying to say before, she worked for a company called LAM Research, L-A-M Research here in the Bay Area, mm-hmm. which is a bit of, I think they're a semiconductor company or something like that. They're pretty big yeah, and well-known. And, yep. and Yeah, in Fremont. And they have major ties to Taiwan and China. So it could have been anybody in her office, as far as I'm concerned, that, that might have traveled because there's a lot of traveling at that time uh, that, that might have uh, given it to her. But I don't think yeah. they've gotten that far in the contact. Well, race. if it had been this far along, we probably, you know, and she'd gotten it now, she could be saved by them giving her detergent or bleach or something like that, solving the whole problem. <laughs> you know. Goes to show you that the travel ban in China wasn't put in fast enough. 
Well, the travel ban in China, was, it, it makes a big deal out of it, but the fact was the Chinese people were saying, well, we can't go in that way. We'll just go to London, and we'll, pay, we'll by the way, while we're there, we'll give it to some people, and then we'll travel across the pond and go to New York City. Ta-da, here we are, the most infected city in the world. Okay. Plus, so, he, did, he did that after the virus was already here. That's like... You know, closing the barn door after the horse has already escaped. Well, also, what he did was, it's like if you have a balloon and you push one side of it, the air's got to go somewhere, so it goes to the other side. And that's exactly what you do. When you stop people from coming here this way, uh, where you can somehow control that, you have them coming the other way, and you don't know that they're, they've come from China or whatever. And while they're at it, they stop off in London, or they stop off in Rome, or they stop off in Paris, and they give it to some people there. So, you know, that was maybe not the best idea. I think the only reason he was doing that was to get at the Chinese more than to take care yeah. of the virus. You know. Yeah, but Alex, even before there's, there's, a, there's Trump and there's a, his uh, travel stops and stuff like that, there's still all the bad actors in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. the dot-coms who have ties to China, who don't care about anything but their own self-interest. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting something like this sooner than later. Phil got up and <laughs> fed up and walked out. Um, what happened? Well, I, I guess because I said that, you know, the only reason he was blocking China from coming here was because he wanted to get at China. But that was my, that's my theory. It's only a theory, folks, I like to say when it's a theory. Sorry to hear about your friend. It's kind of sad to find, mm -hmm. have to find it out that way, you know? Yeah. Yes, it is, Alex. But you know what? Thank you for giving me a platform here. Thank you for all you do for all of us as a morale booster during these times. No, I don't do and, it. I don't uh, do it. So much. I, I don't do it for you. I, I do it for the money. <laughs> so. A regular lamb will, will like you sufficiently. All right. What? I, I said to him, a little lamp will light him sufficiently on Skype. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, call us sometime when you can uh, have your camera on and we can see what you look like. Okay? Sounds like he's in a car. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I have to head off. Gentlemen, you have a great night. Thank you. I'm just sorry to hear about that, but thank you for imparting it to us. It's interesting. All right, Alex. Okay. Best wishes to you all. Stay healthy. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Anyway, that, 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 that was interesting. Uh, you, I guess you were more aware of it, Kevin, because it happened right in your own backyard, right? Yeah, well, that's those are the ones that we were talking about the other night. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Santa Clara I, County. Kevin or Brian, was there a Chinese uh, New Year's parade or lunar parade this year in San Francisco, or did they cancel it? There was, but it was in early fe February. I think it was like February 6th. Why are why you asking me that? You should, sent me Pelosi at the parade. No, she wasn't at the parade. She was at a dinner talking about it. No, she uh, was out in the yeah. streets, too, at the, at the Chinese festival uh, there. She was just walking through Chinatown going into merchants. That's, yeah, that uh, was um, like yeah. February 26 or something. Yeah. It was early. It was actually early this year because I was down in L.A. for it. Yeah, yeah. So actually early this year, like end of January. I, I can't. I can't remember when it was, but my wife gets money at that time of the year uh, from the country. red envelope, red pouch. Yeah, they give a red envelope, and they the, the people you work with who want to kind of tip you for the year put in a couple of hundred bucks in a red envelope. According Thanks. to Donald, she was dancing in the streets and yeah. running around with chicken heads. Yeah, uh, eating <laughs> head, uh, eating the head off bats, I guess. Yeah. You know. sipping, uh, <laughs> sipping bleach. Yeah, sipping bleach. Uh, John, let me ask you this. You live in the Tenderloin in San Francisco, which is the, uh, I guess, what we, it used to be, it's, people would have called it Skid Row in the old days, things like that. Uh, it's still pretty Bowery. much... This is still pretty much like that. Oh my God! There, there's an organization that's given out tents to homeless people, yeah. so you literally can't walk down the sidewalks in the Tenderloin because there's too many. There's so many people on the street. You got to walk in, in the street. Now, it's how so is bad. how how is how are they relating to the COVID crisis? Are they are they wearing the masks and everything, or are they just uh, you know so out of it that they? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them wearing the masks, but. For the large part, you know, they're all doing drugs. And it's a sad thing because, you know, that they're, they're trying to get them off the street and everything. But there's mm -hmm. just so many people. It's 
it's it's a horrible situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They getting hotels for them? Oh, well, they're trying. Yeah, they've uh, they've they've. Uh, I think uh, Newsom uh, got about some like like seven thousand rooms. So we got about seven thousand people off the streets, but that's just uh, a fraction of what's on there. I was talking to a cop a couple days ago in uh, Civic Center, and I looked over in front of Civic Center, and when when Art Agnos was mayor, they, mm -hmm. they had this thing called Tent City, where all the homeless people were out in front of uh, uh, Civic Center, right. but they're not there now. And I, I I looked at it and I told the cop, I said, why don't they move them over there? And he goes, yeah, that's probably where they're going to be in a while, but it's it's. When I, when I was when I was doing a show in San Francisco, um, I uh, I saw the the whole problem with the tents in front of City Hall, yeah. uh, and and I had Willie Brown on. It was mayor at the time, and I said, Willie, you know, why don't you talk with these people? Why don't you go down there and talk to the people and see what their problem is and what their needs are and how they could solve it. And Willie said, that's a great idea, Alex. We're going to do that. So I arranged for us to do a live our show for one morning from the Civic Center with all the people living in those tents and everything. And then Willie Brown was going to come down, and we were going to hold like a town meeting with Willie Brown and these poor people mm -hmm. where they could tell them what their needs were and what the situation was so he could get a better idea of it, a better handle on it. And... Um, uh, Willie Brown came down for five minutes and then left. Yeah. Did he and, say that those people don't vote? And so well, that, that's uh, that's probably what he went, what what he was thinking of. He left in about five minutes, and I just went, "Fuck him!" You know. Then they stole I mean, your microphone. Huh? What? Then they stole the microphone. No, no. <laughs> I talked to the people. We did a whole show with homeless that morning. Uh, you know, and uh, I I thought we could do something really good. You know, they'd have a couple of hours with the with the uh, with the mayor, and uh, we'd all have a town meeting, and they could say what their problems were and why they were there and how they wound up in that condition, and and the mayor could get more of an idea of who these people were, not that they were just a bunch of people who were parked out in front of city hall. So um, you have that on tape? Hmm? That, that's like a time capsule. Do you have that on tape? No, I don't. Uh, I may, I, you know, I get all, I have all these tapes that were sent to me from California, and I go through them, and I don't know, one of them, uh, there might be one there that says, you know, Civic Willie. Center, but that one hasn't been sent to me yet, so. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, that would be really interesting. Here it is, what, what's that, 20-some-odd years earlier? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and all of a sudden, you know. Basically, we, they still have the same problem in San Francisco, yeah. only it's even a little more profound because you got all these siliconies coming in. And taking over the uh, uh, even the cheapest apartments in town, which are now like four thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. And it's remember, it's really remember the studio on Ninth Street. Yeah, turn your turn the light on, would you? In there, we can't see it, John. It's like I'm talking to a a, a couple of eyes, and that's about it. You know. It's, ah, there we go. Well, that's that's slightly better. Uh, you know. Yeah. You remember? Uh, yeah. Uh, there was the John Bull across the street. Yes, across yeah, from <laughs> our old our old radio studio. There was a yeah, bar was right great. across the street, and anytime I wanted to go find Bob Rubin, who was one of the comedians on the yeah. show, I'd have to go over to the John Bull because that's where you would be. Because this bar, this you got to really be an alcoholic to go to this bar because it opened up for <laughs> bo selling booze at six o'clock in the morning. Okay, yeah. you, you could open up a bar in, at six o'clock in the morning, and this was maybe the only bar in San Francisco that was open at six. And you'd go in there, and you'd see genuine alkies. I mean, yeah, you know, no breakfast. And those were Rube's yeah. people, you know. So. Still there? <laughs> Do they sell food? Huh? Do they sell food? No, no. Well, yeah, yeah food? right. Do you want to eat food? Yeah, in the John those little Bull? packs of peanuts on the back of the bar is what they sell for food. Yeah. You know, now, now you realize how nice it was working at Camel. You had the had the view of the bay. Yeah. You, you could yeah. walk across the street to Pier 39, eat at the Eagle Cafe. Right. Uh, uh, right. Uh, that, that, was, that was nice. Plus it had parking. But the John Bull had flavor. You know? Yeah. And <laughs> what, was, what was best on the corner, they had this, this store that was like a bodega. They sold all kinds of stuff in there, you know, everything from cigarettes to, you know, candy to uh, the craft 
macaroni and cheese and stuff like that, you know. And then on this one shelf, they had wigs, hair pieces. <laughs> they were five dollar hair pieces, and we would buy like ten. I'd, I'd buy like ten of them, and then go back to my audience, and have them all put them on, you know. <laughs> I mean, they were the worst. Hair. I can't imagine anybody wearing this hairpiece. And the one time I wore it in the rain and it just fell apart, you know. So, so anyway, that's, well, that isn't the last time I had a hairpiece, though. I actually bought a hairpiece once. Everybody was losing their hair. At one time or another, buys a hairpiece. And uh, I bought one. And uh, it cost me a thousand bucks, and the guy was supposed to give me two of them for a thousand bucks. He was supposed to be the best mm. hairpiece maker in town. It looked horrible. I mean, you, I just huh? did you advertise for the hair club for men? No, was that one of your advertisers? No, no, I think it was. No, 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 it wasn't the hair. Mm -mm. No? But anyway, this this guy uh, gave me this, uh, this gave me this hairpiece, and uh, uh, the only time I ever wore it. We did this TV show called uh, Alex Bennett Wired Again, and in the last scene in the in the show, I play a bartender and I wear the hairpiece, <laughs> and I still have that tape. Maybe some night I'll run it here so you can see me with the hairpiece. Yes. In fact, I will do that because it's pretty disgusting. How was it styled? Was it styled? Well, you were in New York in the seventies, or no, uh, just, it was just you know, it was just hair. It was. Oh, it didn't. Long short. No, no. It was just uh, you know, it fit here, and just, then it I just. Think came I remember also. it. I think it was just like a regular haircut, wasn't it? Oh, it was kind like of. A yeah. Just yeah. yeah it was just a. It was just plop it on the top. Plopped on the top, and then yeah. But the problem with hair pieces is, I mean, this is this is the problem you get into with hair pieces. You've got so much maintenance you've got to do with those things. You know, uh, it's. Uh, it, I, it, 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 uh, you had to, you know, put tape on the on or glue on the thing so it would stick, and then you'd have to worry about it staying there. And you, well, you want to wear it on a date, and you go home with someone to have sex, and she runs her hand through your hair, and she's got her hair in your hand, in her hand. I mean, come on, you know. You stink it, after a few it's days. It's better. It's better to go bald and just live with it and be honest about it, Phil, yeah. than to than to try and. And cover it up with a phony baloney looking hairpiece. Like half of the guys in Washington, D.C., these senators and congressmen, wear oh, some yeah. of the worst oh, hair yeah. pieces <laughs> going. And everybody knows. And everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows. An aborigine from the <clears throat> outback in Australia who has never <laughs> seen another man could look at this guy for the first time in his life, and the first thing he would say was, wig. You know. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, I think most guys who lose their hair at one time or another uh, want to see if they can do something about it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I got uh, plugs. You, know, you got uh, plugs. I, I'll tell you the people who really have a problem with it. When somebody loses their hair really young, like my friend David Feldman lost his hair when he was like 20, started losing it when he was 20. And so he got plugs and he did everything he could. It was like an obsession with him. It, it, when, I, when I started losing my hair, I was 45, maybe. And so, okay, I had it for a while. It's kind of like how I feel about this whole prostate thing right now. Okay, well, it worked for a while. You know, I had a good time with it. You know, I've lived longer than I should. So if the, what I got to pay it for it is that, you know, it doesn't perform at the same expectancy that it once did, so be it. But if I were like 18 and I couldn't get it up and they had to do something to my prostate, I'd, I'd go insane. It'd drive you nuts. So people lose their hair early. It's the same thing. I don't know if I don't want to liken it to losing your prostate, but why not? You know, I think also, like also back then, you're so popular too. I mean, did you really care? I mean, you had, you know, women fuck you money and all that stuff, right? Yeah. He yeah. Wore a hat. yeah. Yeah. I never, no, I didn't wear a hat. Yeah, one time... At the very beginning, I wore a hat, but that wasn't to cover the balding. It hadn't really started yeah. yet. I wore a hat because I didn't want anybody to know what I looked like. I, I remember felt you that, sent it, me it, back to Sausalito because they were yeah. going to take pictures of you at the studio. Right, right. And I ran I, back for, to for the first For the first couple the of years in San Francisco, nobody had a real picture of me because yeah. I felt that 
the mystery of the great mystery of radio was nobody knew what you looked like, and they had to conjure up images in their mind. And I like that theater of the mind. And so if I wore a hat and dark glasses, nobody could really tell what I looked like. They could only assume what I looked like. Uh, and it wasn't done to cover up my hair. And and finally, I decided, ah, you know, enough with that, because I started I'm doing TV and like. thing, things like that. And I said, uh, I'll just... Uh, well, you were doing TV, you were doing TV 20, you were doing a lot of uh, other TV yes. stuff like so Channel I, 9. I, so I decided then it was, you know, I didn't didn't go with the mystery look anymore, as I call it, you know. But. Yeah, you wore a football helmet on on TV 20. Well, but with a, with a, I still have it. Propeller on the I top. I still have it. It had propeller on the top, yeah. Captain UHF. Yeah. yeah, it was Captain UHF, right. <laughs> And I had this killer rabbit or something, a puppet that would try, try to kill me all the time. Yeah. I don't remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was my... Now, but I, I do remember we used to, used to have a list of the times that uh, you were coming on. Mm -hmm. So we'd watch that show, but we'd only watch like at uh, 5.45. Well, we had a movie, and then we did the stuff in the interstitial part of the movie. So I knew yeah. when those segments were coming up and those weren't the days where we had like computer files and I could just take it home and look at it you know right so, so I don't even have any TV. of that I don't even remember what it looked like you know yeah uh, we watch TV and they say okay it's coming up <laughs> so, uh, we wouldn't watch the movie just the little little part yeah yeah so you know and what then tapes I, did you bring back what, what tapes did you bring back from Petaluma from Petaluma <clears throat> well I mean from uh, your, your, yeah. your storage Oh, my storage, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Damien has been sending me some of the cassettes, audio cassettes. I still have to get more from him, and he hasn't, he hasn't done anything about it, and right now is no time to have him do it. So, um, From Live 105 stuff? Yeah, Live 105. I want to get all the audio cassettes, and then I've got video. I've got tons of video. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to get most of it if I could, you know, but uh, it's kind of difficult right now. So, anyway, we got about a minute left here. Gosh, well, we've uh, we've uh, managed to uh, uh, um, what what Scott wrote. Basically, Alex claims Howard Stern stole his shtick. I don't claim it. It's true. He did. Yeah, he did. Who said and that? Somebody Brian? on there also said that he stole your wig. Oh, really. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, well, he wears it's, extensions, and they used to be mine. So, you know, I mean, what the hell? Um, not a gray hair on his head. <laughs> so anyway, well, we're living in the time of the coronavirus, and I don't think any of us will forget it. Okay? This is the kind of time we're just not going to forget. This is as unusual as it gets. I don't think I've had in my lifetime an experience like this. Any of you? Can any of you say that anything else has topped it? No. You know, I remember you know. sitting at home and watching the World Trade Center come down, and I thought that was the worst I was ever going to see. Well, well, the '89 earthquake was uh, pretty devastating in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. well, well, yes, but y you were only out of your apartment for a certain amount of time, or you were out of it completely. But it it resolved itself in a different way. If you weren't dead, yeah. you survived it, it, and you went it on was with a your life. Event. Yeah, this is exactly. long and drawn out. This, yeah. uh, who knows how long this is going to go, you know? Yeah. But uh, it, it, May first. Uh, uh, no, I don't think uh, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I wouldn't plan on it, Phil. No. Prediction in a pre previous show. Yeah, no, it's not. What'll, gonna... what'll last? Hey, long? Phil, your first car wash is free. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, and don't Mike forget, don't forget to bring the bleach. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. Good, uh, good seeing you again tonight. God, we love having you on this show. Boy, what an addition to the to the to the lineup. Jeff didn't say anything again two nights in a row for the most part, <laughs> but that's fine. I, you know, uh, he adds to our numbers. Charlie, thank you for calling. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, John Larkin from the Tenderloin in San Francisco. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, 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 Tony, thank you. And of course, Patrick, thank you. What I'd like you all to do is to give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye to you as well. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Citizens Panel. Bye. Okay, that's them. And uh, hopefully, some of them will stick around and go talk to uh, Jack Bishop, who's coming up next 
with the intersection over most of this same gap net. Uh, I'll be back here again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night, and stay safe. <laughs>